Hello Metal Stud Framers, my name is Chris Conkle, welcome to Construction Cronies. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys about laying out your interior steel stud walls and understanding hash marks. I'm going to explain hash marks, okay, real quick, okay? So this is a very, uh, these rooms are kind of messed up, right? They're like rectangle, but let's pretend they're like square. This is a typical office type scenario um you got these are your doors okay i know they don't look good but let's we'll just say doors um sorry you know what let's draw that properly they're gonna they're gonna swing to this side and this side right right <clears throat> those are the swings and the doors so this is a very typical setup now on uh, when when you're looking at the drawings okay they're gonna give you a, like a, a grid line somewhere let's say it's like here okay uh you're not going to be able to see that but you might be able to see a little bit they're going to give you a measurement from here to to here right say two foot three quarter inch okay um there there's different places for this okay um you, they can go to center of wall or inside of wall, right? And then, and sometimes it'll be like center to inside or like center to center or, you know, uh, center to outside. You never know. Just follow the hash marks. And then you need to add and subtract. You, could, you If it's on the outside, you have to come back the width of the drywall to the steel, Okay. And if it's to the center, it's nice because you just got to go out half of the half the thickness of the wall, right? I just like with a with a with my pencil, just quickly add it up, you know, just on a on like on the ground as I'm going kind of thing, you know. I just add it up. Okay, this is there, there, you know. Like I'll do it right on the concrete on the ground as I'm going, you know. Um, it's usually just like little tiny measurements and like numbers you got to do, unless you're doing like a huge order or an estimate, right? Then then you then we're talking conversions and things like that, you know. Hey, Zaphiel, what's up, bro? Nice to see you, man. Uh, so yeah, find find a, a landmark, a grid line, and then get your walls laid out. Find find a find one wall that you can get to, right? Um, to to get the other walls from, right? Um, another couple things with laying out steel stud, and I did touch on this in the video, is you got to watch your corners, okay? Because we're going to be talking about the flow of drywall here, okay? Right, the flow of drywall is going to be. Uh, you always start drywalling the inside of a room, okay? The inside. And the reason for that, so that you can lock the studs in, okay? So, for example, you have to, you have to find your centers, your 16-inch centers, so that the drywall fits properly, okay? Yeah, my drawings suck, eh? <laughs> Where's the moat and alligators? I love it. That's awesome. So... Uh, what I mean by this is you're, you want to plan a, a sheet of drywall to start basically in the middle of the wall, okay? This wall isn't going to be framed tight into this wall or that wall. There's going to be a floating stud there, okay? When the drywall is in there, you're going you're gonna to then put the stud tight to the drywall and screw it in from the back side, okay? You're going to do that there. You're going to do it here. You're gonna do it also in the corners, okay? So you'll you'll do you a 48, 48, and then your your cut in or whatever. All right, let's just say that it's a 48 there. All right, the same thing, okay? You're gonna put the stud in tight at the corner and screw it in from this way. All right, that's how it works. Yeah, when yeah on the bottom here on the bottom of your track always yeah. Um, I, I, this is how this steel looks to, to underneath that, right? I've done, I showed you guys this before, I think. Uh, but let's see if I got room here. Uh, a corner, uh, is going to kind of look like, oh wait, you no, know I had a, I did this a better way before. Uh, uh, how did I do this? All right, so this is a piece of track. 
you're going to cut it back. Say it's three and five eighths. Okay. Cut, cut, cut the, cut the track back four inches, right? Then, or four and a quarter. Then you got yourself, um, uh, a good, good room for like, you can go five eighths or three or three quarter. It, it, it doesn't really matter. Like a half inch is, um, uh, isn't going to matter if there's a quarter inch of steel missing there. Um, and then the five eighths, it just slides in a little bit easier on a three quarter, uh, four and a quarter. It's kind of what I, what I, what I do. And then, so when I put in the track this way, okay. To, to join in, I put a full piece in so that this is overlaying the bottom track. Okay. Oh, this is right. Yeah. Um, so, okay. <clears throat> this is an interior wall. Yes. I'll, I'll show you the exterior. I'll, I'll explain the exterior. Okay. In, in one second, but yeah. So anyways, you're going to have floaters here, there, 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 and there. Okay. You're going to have floating studs. This is you fl You always drywall the inside first that way you, you can uh, uh, um, insulate the outsides right is is good usually you, out, you insulate the outsides and maybe one side here okay or at the very least you insulate a whole room skip a room insulate a whole room skip a room insulate think about that okay uh, insulation is another issue right you want to be able to do everything the fastest most efficient way possible Okay, so if you have to go into individual rooms to insulate instead of just doing a long hallway, it takes more time. Remember, if you have any questions at all, leave them down below in the comments because I get back to absolutely everybody. I'm going to leave a video right here so you guys can keep watching, keep learning, and I'll see you on the next one.